This video is sponsored by Best Buy. There are so many good drawing and painting apps out there that it can be hard to know where to start. Some are really good, but can be kind of confusing, whereas others are fairly well known, but they're also, well, they're kind of expensive. So I'm gonna be going over the apps that I think are great starting points if you're just jumping into digital art for the very first time. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. So let's just jump into it. The very first app that I think newcomers should take a look at is an app called Krita. Now, the best thing about Krita is it's an open source app, which means it is absolutely free and it will always be free. It works on Windows, Mac, even Linux and Android now. The pros of this app is it's for drawing and drawing alone. There are some other open source apps out there like GIMP that you can draw in, but it's really not designed for drawing. It's a photo editing app that just happens to have some brushes. Krita was designed from the ground up for art and illustration. It's also fully featured. There's everything you would expect from a full-blown drawing app, from layers to tons of different brushes and erasers and things like that in your paint bucket tool and all sorts of settings for all that. There's even animation in here. Very basic rudimentary animation, but animation nonetheless. The cons is that since you have all of this stuff going on in Krita, it can be a little bit confusing if you've never used a drawing app before, if you're not familiar with layers, if you're not familiar with some of the nuances and details of these things. But I think there are some things that Krita is doing here that really work in its favor. For example, the brush palette, which is usually docked down below in the lower right hand corner, has these little icons on it. So you can see, oh, the eraser looks like an actual eraser. The paintbrush looks like a paintbrush. The pen looks like a pen. The pencil looks like a pencil. Little details and nuances like that will help you figure out what you're trying to draw with before you even start. And then as you start to learn the app, you can dive deeper and deeper. For example, there's great line smoothing features in here. The paint bucket tool has a lot of different features and elements and options here. There's an eyedropper tool and selection tools. There's just so much in here to learn. So there can be a bit of a learning curve if you've never used a drawing app before. Credit can be a little bit intimidating, but since it's free, a lot of people find that it's a good place to start because you're not investing a ton of money to learn up front. The next app I want to talk about is an app called Sketchable, and it was designed from the ground up for touch interfaces. But before I dive too deep into that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Best Buy. They sent this over to me. This is the Surface Pro Copilot Plus PC. Now I tested all the apps that I'm using in this video to make sure that they work on these new Copilot PCs. And I did a full review of this Surface Pro 11 earlier this year. And by far, my favorite part, by far, is the battery life on this thing. It is crazy. Most laptops will give you a few hours of battery life before you need to plug them in. Whereas this thing legit goes all day. We're talking seven, eight hours before I had to plug it in. And of course, I'm using a lot of really intensive drawing apps. Many apps like Fresco, which I get to talk about later in this video, require you to be using it in high power mode, which means it's going to use more of that battery. But still, even running that on this battery with this processor, so much more efficient. Something I always do is that when I'm leaving for the weekend, I forget to plug in my laptop at the end of the day. And when I come in on Monday morning, that thing's battery is just dead. The standby mode on this is great. If I leave it out overnight, I'm only losing like three or four percent of my battery over the weekend i'm losing like 10 to 20 percent almost nothing compared to other laptops this is in large part to the surface pros transition to new arm based snapdragon x processors that you will find in these these processors are just as fast as the old processors for my art tasks but they are just way more efficient since this is a hybrid machine which is part laptop part tablet i can take it with me anywhere i go and use it as like a mobile sketchbook and when i am using it as a mobile sketchbook book, whether I'm holding it in my hands, drawing on the couch, maybe I'm outside in a chair. It's just not getting as hot. That means my hand isn't going to stick to the screen as much. That means it's just going to be more comfortable to hold for longer periods of time. And of course, when I want to switch from drawing to other tasks, whether we're talking checking email or writing scripts for my video, no problem. I just fold the keyboard over and I just start typing. This is a full-fledged Windows PC that can do anything. All of this for a starting price of $999. The key the keyboard cover is surprisingly sturdy considering how thin it is and the pen stores right there inside. It also recharges 
while it's in there. So when I put the Surface in my bag to take it with me, I know my pen is always gonna be charged up and working wherever I'm going. These Copilot PCs come packed with new features like Caption, the ability to translate any video from any platform into English from 44 different languages, and other features like Co-Create in MS Paint. Check out my link down below in the description to save $300 on select Surface Copilot Plus PC devices from Best Buy today. And thank you, Best Buy, for sponsoring this video. The next app that I wanna talk about here is Sketchable. Sketchable is not free, it does cost $20, but it is built from the ground up to work on touch-based windows, tablets, and screens. Now the benefit here is that when you wanna do something like pinch in and out to zoom or pan around your image, you could do that all with your hands. You can even undo with just one hand. No keyboard required, that's a huge benefit. Also, all the tools are laid out in a really intuitive way. There are a lot of options here. For example, I have line smoothing and I can adjust the size and all the things you would expect in your brushes, but they're just kind of tucked away intelligently within the interface. It never really feels like anything is getting in your way. I also think that the default brushes and the way that things are set up are super intuitive. If you've never used a drawing app before in your life, Sketchable is a great place to start. It just kind of all makes sense. You want to you pick a brush, you want an eraser, you pick an eraser. You want your layers, they're right here on the side. All of your tools are available to you, but none of them seem super overwhelming, kind of like Krita can be at times for newcomers. Number three, I wanna talk about Adobe Fresco. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid of Adobe because Adobe has a really expensive subscription service that costs like $60 a month. It's crazy insane. That subscription service does come with Fresco, but also it's important to note there is a free version of Fresco out there. If you sign up for an Adobe account, you can use it at no cost. It allows you to save your files and there's a fair amount of tools here. The one thing that is a little limited is there aren't nearly as many brushes in the free version. There's some other things missing as well, but those are like more advanced features that you probably won't miss too much if you're a beginner. Fresco is another one of those apps that is designed from the ground up to work on a touch-based screen. They've borrowed a lot of features from Procreate over on the iPad. So in a lot of ways, this really feels like an iPad app that just happens to be running on Windows. Your tools are on the left, your layers are on the right, everything kind of gets out of your way. There's this little circle in the lower right-hand corner. You can actually move that around. That's a modifier. And so different tools behave differently when you're tapping on that. Even though the brushes are limited, the brushes they do have here are just really well designed. They were actually, many of them designed by Kyle Webster, who's considered one of the greatest brush designers of our age. He's currently working for Procreate, but for years he worked here on Fresco designing some really amazing brushes that feel tactile like real life pencils and paint and oil brushes and things like that. Another app to consider is one called Concepts. Now this is one I haven't talked about in years, but I went back and I tried it again and I loved how the pens felt. They just feel so smooth and nice. Concepts does cost $25, but there is a free demo available to you. And this is another one I chose because I just feel like the interface is so intuitive. If you've never drawn before, you can still look at this and know exactly how it operates. You know, hey, this tool does this, this tool does that. Oh, that's my eraser, everything just kind of makes sense and everything is where you think it should be. It's also another one of those apps that you can use with a keyboard and mouse on Windows, but it's also designed to be used in a touch interface sort of environment. So if you do have a Windows tablet or a touchscreen graphics tablet or something like that, it's very easy to use with just your hands. What about another free one? Let's take a look at this. This is called Medibang. And Medibang is something that I've used a lot on Android tablets and iPads over the years because it also is free. Nowadays, there is a pro version. So if you wanna pay for one with more features, but I find the free version actually has a fair amount of stuff already in it. Now this is designed like a traditional desktop app. So it's not quite as intuitive as the last few that I mentioned, but it's still simple enough that you can kind of figure it out and find your way around with it. It's not as fully featured is Krita, and I would suggest going to Krita before I go to this, but if you find Krita to be a little bit too overwhelming, I find that this one's just a little bit more scaled down. There's not quite as much going on here. There's not quite as many features to get in your way, but you still have that kind of desktop-y feel. Now, the next one is the most expensive one on this list, and this is Clip Studio, and this is one of my all-time favorite things to draw in. Now, I almost didn't put it on here because I'm not sure Clip Studio is really great 
appropriate for beginners, at least not on Windows. On Android and iPad, they have a streamlined interface that I think is great for beginners. Here, you get the full desktop interface, so there is a lot of stuff going on. Like if you click on the pencil, you get a lot of tools that just kind of come out of that side menu. They can be really overwhelming. However, I think once you kind of dive in, how it's structured and how it's built and get used to that is really, really powerful. This also isn't cheap. It is $55. Oftentimes you will find it cheaper if it goes on sale. Another thing worth noting is that it seems like every year they're rolling out a new iteration of that and you have to purchase an upgrade. You don't have to. Your 3.0 license, if you bought it today, is going to be fine in perpetuity. They also have a subscription service. So if you did want features as they roll out throughout the year, you can subscribe to this. But Clip Studio is so much fun. This also has animation features into it, in it. It's built for comics. Its line art is fantastic. It has so many different pen tools that all just have a little bit of variation between them. Actually, as I talk about that, I realize that's the sort of thing that might throw like beginners and newcomers for a loop. I think it's worth looking into once you get going, maybe for your first art app ever, you're probably better off sticking with some of the others that I've mentioned on this list. And the last one I want to talk about here is an app called Sketchbook. Now, Sketchbook has jumped between several different owners over the last few years, and I've kind of lost track of it and all of the things it can do. But jumping back in, I found the interface to be fairly intuitive. Even though this is a desktop app, it feels a little bit more streamlined than some of the other desktop apps like Clip Studio or Krita or Medibank. It also has incorporated a lot of touch features into it, whereas the others have as well. Well, you know, Clip Studio has touch features, two fingers to undo, you can pan around, pinch to zoom. But here it just feels a touch more intuitive, a little less desktop-y. This is also not free. This is $25. That's probably why it's so late on this list. I think it's worth considering because it works so well and it is really fun to draw in. And I find that the tools and the brushes and the things that they have available are really, really nice. It's worth mentioning here because I think it's really, really good. So that is my list of what I think are the best drawing apps available for Windows for newcomers if you're just diving in for the first time. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments which ones you think are easiest to use or if I missed any that are really, really important to you. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.